Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. I just ran up the stairs. It was like 13 steps. Okay, let's do this. No, I ran up the stairs twice, all right? All right. Cringy statement of the day. Let's go. Uh, Battle of Drawbuck Sound, 1940. Let's do it. One of the recommendations. Um, if you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Connor. I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations. The original link to the video is at the top of the description below. Right below that would be the link to the Discord. It makes it easier for me to interact with you. Just click on it. It'll send you right over there. I'd love to have you. More the merrier. Pull up a chair, my friend. We're nice, usually, sometimes. Most of us. Sort of. Love to have you. If you're not ready to learn, there's the door. You're in the wrong class. Home ec is down the hall. Make me... Ravioli. Cheese. No, beef. Cheese ravioli. Okay, let's go. It's a cool and quiet April evening at Oscarsborg Fortress. Colonel Birger Eriksson of the Norwegian Army takes his time strolling down the pathway and looking as thick mist slowly descends. Uh. It's a cool and quiet April evening at Oscarsborg Fortress. Colonel Birger Eriksson of the Norwegian Army takes his time strolling down the pathway and looking as thick mist slowly descends down the nearby hills that encompassed the Oslo Fjord. The colonel is just about to end his regular inspection before going to have some well-deserved rest. The calm atmosphere is suddenly spurred into energy as one of his officers catches up to him and gasps his report. A flotilla of enemy warships has breached into the fjord some 60 kilometers to the south, bringing war to Norway. This video is sponsored by World of Warships Blitz. Tactical sea I was thinking about playing this. Free to play World of Warships Blitz. Available via App Store and Google Play, World of Warships Blitz lets you take to the seas as the commander of your very own battle fleet. What's more, as of the end of this month, the game now boasts a new, fast and deadly addition to your armada, the German Destroyers, for the Admiral who embodies the word Monkey. Blitz. Support our channel by clicking the link in the description below. Install the game, and upon reaching level 3, you will receive your very own German destroyer, the G101. My very with own? Forward firing torpedo capabilities. Hope y'all are doing well, by the way. If not, that sucks. He'll be good soon. Emotions are fickle. Which means... Alright, let's go. Ooh, maps. It's the middle of December of the year 1939. After the successful invasion of Poland a couple of months earlier, the German High Command focuses on replenishing material and manpower losses, in addition to sketching out plans for the following year's campaign to the West. At the same time, German leaders also become increasingly aware of the British readiness to infringe on the neutrality of Norway and Sweden in the event of any hostile German activity in the area. Such British action will not only curb the potential of the Kriegsmarine, by capturing some strategic naval they bases they have a lot on the of, Norwegian like, coast, iron ore. but also be a severe blow to the German war economy. Due to insufficient domestic supply, the German industry was heavily dependent on shipments of Swedish iron ore being moved through the ports of Lullio and Narvik. Thus, the German planners were urged to lay out another offensive operation, but this time to the north. Though initially of relatively low priority, the German invasion plan picked up momentum in mid-February of the next year, when the British destroyer flotilla intercepted the German oil tanker Altmark in the Norwegian fjord and freed 300 British prisoners of war previously captured by the Kriegsmarine on the southern Atlantic. This incident, where both Allied and Axis forces violated Norwegian neutrality, convinced Hitler that the British threat to German interests in the region was real and so an invasion of Norway was given top priority. In the beginning of April, the preparation period was over. The invading force was organized into six battle groups to perform amphibious assaults on six primary targets, among them the capital city of Oslo. Here the main German objective was to capture King Haakon alongside the Norwegian cabinet in a surprise strike and subsequently install a puppet government in place of the old one. The nautical path to the Norwegian capital led through the Oslo Fjord, a 100-kilometer-long inlet naturally divided into two sections. 
the entrance to the inner part of the fjord was guarded by Oskarsborg, a 19th century coastal fortress with its main defensive facilities located on two small islands and equipped with three Krupp manufactured 28 centimeter coastal defense guns, which were, just like the entire fortress, well past their prime. A few supporting batteries armed with 15 centimeter and smaller caliber guns were situated nearby on the mainland. In addition, by 1940, Oskarsborg served primarily as a training facility and was only supplied with limited troops. In the night between the 8th and 9th of April, Oskarsborg commander, 65-year-old Colonel Birger Eriksson, received an urgent message that an unidentified group of warships forced their way into the fjord, past the outer fortifications. He immediately ordered the raising of the alarm and the manning of the guns. Despite having three loaded artillery pieces at his disposal, he had barely enough trained men to crew two of them, as he only received a few hundred fresh conscripts just seven days before. The night was calm and foggy, only occasionally lit by beams cast by the searchlights. As time passed by painfully slow, the Norwegian crew patiently waited until enemy warships loomed out of the fog. At 4.20 in the morning, Norwegian searchlights picked up the silhouette of the first ship steaming towards them from a few kilometers away. It was the time for Colonel Eriksson to decide whether to engage or to let them through. It wasn't an easy decision to make, as he could only guess at whether the invaders were British or German. He was well aware of Norway's neutrality, but he also knew that the Norwegian government leaned towards joining the British side in the event of Norway becoming involved in the war. Sorry, but wouldn't an easier way for Germany maybe to just send a letter over there saying, hey, surrender, or and then just if they don't send the Luftwaffe in, and I'd imagine they could do very little. I mean, the German Air Force at this time was super powerful um maybe this is a better idea lean towards joining the british side in the event of norway becoming involved in the war enemy warships were drawing closer past the two kilometer mark gunnery officers watched the old commander carefully that was when colonel ericsson hesitating no longer gave the order by saying either i will be decorated or i will be court-martialed fire the first high-caliber gun roared, lighting up the surroundings for a brief moment. The high-explosive shell hit one of the masts, crippling the main rangefinder and setting the midship on fire. Nice shot. Giving the enemy no time to react, the second gun thundered, striking near the aircraft hangar and igniting a second major fire. Though the defenders did not learn this straight away, the ship they had shelled was the Blucher, the German brand new Admiral Hipper class heavy cruiser and the flagship of the task force dispatched to attack Oslo. The fires quickly spread on board the Blucher, detonating some of the infantry explosives she carried while Norwegian mainland batteries scored additional hits on the German. I'm sorry that this is impressive on Norway's part and this commander's um, bollocks, isn't that? Uh, good courage there and, and whatnot, but why not just send in your the Luftwaffe and just bomb them into submission? What? Why risk sending them into these narrow, high, great defensive fjords? German heavy she carried, while Norwegian mainland batteries scored additional hits on the German heavy cruiser as she steamed forward. The second ship in the line, another heavy cruiser, the Lutzau was soon hit several times by Norwegian medium caliber artillery, causing serious damage and forcing her and the rest of the task force to reverse their course and escape the fjord. Meanwhile, the Blucher, with violent fires raging on board, had already passed the main Norwegian... Is the Blucher named after Napoleonic Wars Prussian commander Blucher? Battery, with violent fires raging on board, had already passed the main Norwegian battery and was just about to encounter another unexpected disaster. The Germans were well informed regarding the Oskarsborg's defensive installations, but deemed them mostly harmless on account of the installations being primarily used as a training facility. What the Germans weren't aware of, however, was the underground torpedo battery, Oskarsborg's secret weapon, 
equipped with 40-year-old whitehead torpedoes of Austro-Hungarian manufacture. Though nobody was sure if this obsolete armament would work as intended, the retired commander of the battery, Captain Anderson, ordered that they be fired anyway. That's cool. So they, why haven't I seen these before in other videos? So they're, they're stationary, can't be moved, torpedo launchers in a, you know, in narrow inlets where you can expect an invasion into one of your main cities and, and fire, that's, that's smart. Why? And they're obsolete? That seems like a good idea. Commander of the battery, Captain Anderson, ordered that they be fired anyway. The first torpedo hit the bow section of the German cruiser, causing only some minor damage. But the aim of the second torpedo was better adjusted, and the projectile hit midship, roughly where one of the 28 centimeter shells had struck a couple of minutes earlier. The blue ship started to take water, causing her to list heavily to the port side. Firefighting teams struggled to contain the fire, and soon, flames reached the ship's secondary ammunition magazines. Yet another violent explosion damaged the structure of the German cruiser. With no other choice, the task force commander on board the Blucher gave the order to abandon the sinking ship. Three hours later, in the early morning of the 9th of April, the Blucher capsized and went down to the bottom of the Oslo Fjord, taking with her the bodies of between 500 and 1,000 sailors and invading troops. Despite the setback in Oslo Fjord, the German war machine continued to move forward against Norway. Oskarsborg was the subject of heavy bombing from the Luftwaffe there later you go. that day. Why, why, do, why didn't you do that first? Forcing Colonel Eriksson to eventually surrender the fortress. Hindsight's 2020, I know, especially learning about history, but come on, why you're... The invading troops landed further south, in considerable distance from the capital, but out of the range of Norwegian coastal defenses. The unexpected resistance mounted by the crew of the Oskarsborg Fortress not only destroyed one of the bigger and newest warships of the Kriegsmarine, but crucially delayed the German invasion of Oslo by several precious hours, during which, with national gold reserves secured, the royal family and the Norwegian cabinet were able to escape north, where they could mount the defense of their homeland for the next two months. Awesome video. This is a great channel. Despite, all right, uh, Berger Eriksson, Colonel, despite his efforts to delay the German invasion, Colonel Eriksson came under criticism of government investigators just after the war ended, who claimed that he surrendered Oskarsburg Fortress earlier than it was necessary. The charges were eventually dropped, and Eriksson was awarded the highest Norwegian decoration, War Cross with Sword. Cool, cool. Um, as the nominal commander of the torpedo battery at Oskarberg was on sick leave at the time of German attack, Colonel Eriksson summoned retired Captain Andreas Andersen living nearby in Drobok to, sorry for the, probably pronounced that wrong, to take over the command of the fortress's secret weapon hours before. Uh, the Blucher came into rain. All right, sorry, yeah living nearby and drove back to take over the command of the fortress' secret weapon hours before the Blucher came into range of Norwegian guns. For his valor, Captain, Captain Anderson was also decorated with the war cross with sword. Is there number three? The Battle of Drobok Sound is featured in The King's Choice, the 2016 Norwegian biographical war film directed by Eric Pop. The movie's, plot uh, the movie's plot revolves around the German invasion of Norway from the perspective of King Hakon VII and the Norwegian royal family. Cool, cool. Awesome. Um... Alright, so I'll watch any, um... preceding episodes any episodes after this that are following this I'll, I'll be sure to watch um at some time i get a lot of back backups with the recommendations i'm trying to get through that was a great video though and uh yeah see you guys next time hit all the buttons